でとう。ハッピーバースデーパスタハッピーバースデーパスタハッピーバースデーパスタハッピーバースデーパスタカーペンダーハッピーバースデーパスタカーペンダーアサンデサンアパスタコヨトウリオトパティアモンゴコバリキ。プレイズガンバレーパスタハッピーバースデー I'm not going to sing the whole song because I do not want to make anyone jealous.、Um, I just want to say that you're awesome and I know I'm your favorite person in the church, but you don't have to tell me. And I love you and, and you're great. Thank you. Thank you for the church and I love, really love you and happy birthday.、Um, I just want to say thanks for always preaching the truth to us and I love you. Thanks for Christian Academy. And thank you for the college that is coming soon. Happy birthday. I love you, Pastor e s a y Good words. And I love you very much. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Pastor Carpenter. Carpenter. Happy birthday, Pastor. Happy birthday. Pastor, we just want to tell you that words can't really describe what you mean to my family and I. And I believe that only heaven's going to reveal the impact that you have had on this world. I want to thank you for always modeling the way for men on how we are to live our life as a husband and as a father who wishes to lead our family to heaven.、And、I just want to say that I love you and we thank you. I thank you for being a man after God's own heart and for truly feeding us His Word. We love you, Pastor. Thank you. I want to wish my pastor. And my father in law, a very happy 60th birthday.、Um, wow, there's no one I would rather serve under、um, than you. you. You are the perfect umbrella that I feel safe beneath.、Um, it's an honor just to serve beside you, it's an honor to help you fulfill the vision that God has directly given you. And、uh, just to be a part of the team of First Apostolic Church. Happy birthday, Pastor. Happy birthday, Pastor. Thank you for being a man of godly wisdom and vision. A vision not only for the Maryville campus, but also a vision for the Sevierville campus, and allowing us to be a small part in that. Thank you. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Pastor, for being such a light in this dark world and during the times that we live in. Thank you for being a lighthouse that we can all look to and for buying the truth and selling it not. Hey, Pastor Carpenter, we wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you for leading the way in evangelism and discipleship. Thank you for always reminding us that in our endeavors in life, we should always focus on the kingdom of God. And thank you for keeping in remembrance that this world is not our home. God bless you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor Carpenter. Thank you for believing in us and challenging us to greatness. We are so thankful for every opportunity that you've given us to help serve the greatest church in all the world. Happy birthday. We are very thankful for the school you had a vision of that we were both able to be a part of. Happy birthday, Pastor Carpenter. Happy birthday, Pastor Carpenter. Thank you for always inspiring us in the midst of uncertainty and, to always, and teaching us to always have faith over fear. We also want to thank you for leading us through the storms of life and always reminding us and in reinforcing that if we keep God at the center, that all things are possible through Him. Happy birthday. Happy we, birthday. We love you. Yes, we love you. Thank you, Dad, for teaching us how to pray. The sound of your voice、uh, in the prayer room is something that、um, is absolutely amazing. Uh, the sound of your voice praying in our home、um, when I was a little girl, when I was their age growing up, is something that I'll never forget. And、uh, the very things that you say during prayer are the things that, that I find myself praying now, and that、um, I get the privilege to teach our girls. And I'm just so thankful for your voice and your fervency of prayer and the push that you have to advance the kingdom of God. Thank you, Pastor Carpenter, for having a heart of a true shepherd. Thank you for the vision for the unlimited. And just thank you for always making us feel at home and a part of the family of God. We love you. We love you. 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 We are here today because a missionary had the burden to preach the gospel in Japan. 
Thank you, Pastor Carpenter, for always reminding us about the never-ending love of God and for always reminding us that God's grace never gives up on humanity. As long as there is breath, there is hope. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful birthday. On behalf of the Isabel family, we want to say thank you for your godly leadership and example to our family. You are a visionary and a man of impeccable character. We are daily inspired by your servant's heart and ability to lead with love. Only heaven will reveal the countless lives you touch through your ministry. Happy 60th birthday. We love you and pray God's continued blessings upon you. Can we all stand except for Pastor? Everybody except for Pastor. We're going to sing 60th birthday. Y'all ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. sing to the Lord a little while. We're going to have some more special things for Pastor. Come on, sing this with us. my home I am just passing through earthly treasures soon will fade but I found my hope in you you are the one I want you are the one I need this world can have it all it's a good
Happy birthday, Pastor. The Word of God says that where there is no vision, the people will perish. We couldn't be more excited than to be a part. The Word of God says that where there is no vision, the people will perish. We couldn't be more excited than to be a part of your ministry, Pastor Carpenter, and so excited about what the future holds. And it's been an absolute dream being a part of the Miracle Miracle. But I do believe that First Apostolic Church knows that the Miracle Miracle is just begun. And we are so excited about the soon coming Bible College of FAC of Maryville. And today we want to present you with a special gift to put your dream to a reality. Prophesy, Nolan. Prophesy, son. I prophesy to the back of our property. What we see is grass, a field that we have to mow often, but one day house a place where students can come. The back of our property, which is now empty, I prophesy to that valley. I prophesy to those dead bones that we don't see as being alive. I prophesy to the back of our property, and one day you will hold the Bible college that will bring revival to cities. One day the back of our property will hold the revival that will bring to countries that have never heard the word of God. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. I prophesy it, God, as we step out on faith. I prophesy that you're going to take care of this church. I prophesy that you're going to take care of the means. I prophesy that you will give us the means for this building. You will give us the means for it, oh God. As we step out, I prophesy that you will provide the finances for this building in the name of Jesus. Brother Harrison, I asked you to go get some keys this morning. I think they're on one of these chairs. If Sister Carpenter has it, put them in her purse. Oh, stop, stop right there. You don't know what keys you got. Bring me the keys to the Bible college. <laughs> Sister Carpenter, not now. Not till after this wedding. But I want you, and I know all decor matter has to go through you. But I want my keys to the Bible college put in a glass box of some sort and put on my desk so that every day I'm going to look and see. Come on, aren't you thankful for a man of God with a vision? Come on, why don't you put your hands together and lift up some praise that God has given us a pastor that has a dream, that has a vision. I believe that there is going to be victory in the future for FAC, a people that prosper. Amen. Come on, why don't you just lift up some praise right now as we continue to worship the name of God tonight. God, we give you praise tonight. God, we're so thankful for what's going to happen in our future here. At FAC, we give you praise for our pastor tonight, God. Lord, we give you glory and honor. Thank you for your presence that we feel in this house. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't breathe. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. As we sing, choir, you can make your way and join us this evening. I'm going to sing the victory for the battle.
praise to him right now. be seated this evening. One.
for he is a faithful God. Woo. Come on, put your hands together like this. Yeah. He's doing it all again.
isn't it good to have the sanctuary choir back? What an anointed group of singers and worshipers. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just lift up hands. We're about to go into a great part of our service called an offering. But before we do, let's just lift up our hands and praise Him. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for always being right where we need you to be. Always an on time, God. Always an on time, God. What a great and mighty God. What a great and mighty God. Oh, how great is our God. Come on, sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great. How great. Come on, sing. How great. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Come on, let's lift him up in this place. Come on, he's a drawer. Oh, how great say. We lift you up today, Father. Sing about your greatness and your power. Ever change and never change.
your kindness to us. Amen. Remain standing just for a moment. Our ushers are making their way forward. I know that you've been standing for some time. And so I will be very quick uh, with my uh, prelude to our offering. But as they are coming today, I believe, and we announced it very well, but please don't forget, we are going to have a great week this week. General Ministry Conference right here. Uh, if you could be here at least each evening, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, be here at 7 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be an awesome conference. We are bringing in the best of the best to preach, to sing, and to lead us in worship. Be here. If you can by any means be here, be here, and we're going to have a great conference. And also on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., we're also going to be having the conference. Amen. We are going to be marching by sections. Uh, section 1, 3, and 5 will be our first section of march. Uh, 2, 4, and 6, after we have prayed, you may be seated. Uh, we're going to march out the right side of our pew, back in the left side. Amen. This is a chance to bring an offering, to bring our tithe to the storehouse today. Let's pray. Father, we love you. What a great spirit we feel, Lord God. I feel a spirit of victory. I, I, I feel a spirit that is victorious over this COVID-19. I feel a spirit that is victorious over everything going on in our nation right now. Lord, you are greater. You are more powerful. And Lord, we feel your presence in this place. Lord, I pray tonight as we bring our offering, as the scripture says, to bring an offering and the tithe into the storehouse, I just believe the promise that follows, Lord, our bringing is that you'll pour out blessings upon each family of this church. Lord, won't you bless them tonight? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Two, four, and six, you may be seated. Amen. Sections one, three, and five, let's give.
you stand with me right now? Now that song was a birthday gift to me because during COVID-19 at my house and several times during the day, I turned on YouTube to Merle Ewing. And Merle Ewing woke me up every morning telling me that I'm going to make it just as long as me and Jesus stays friends. Said I loved him in the sunshine and now he's hoping I'm going to love him in the rain. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Oh, if you believe you're going to make it, give him the best praise you'd give him all night long. Come on, you believe you're going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it tonight. I'm going to make it. Praise God. I'm going to make it just as long as me and Jesus stays friend. You're going to make it too. Just as long as you stay on the, the speaking terms with God, you're going to make it. Because no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Because you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. That's right. That's right. You're going to make it. What a beautiful presence of God that we're feeling in this place tonight. And to all of our special guests that are here, if this is your first time to be at the First Apostolic Church, we welcome you tonight. If you like Sister Kathy and Sister Caitlin that was here last Sunday night, you're a returning guest. Thank you so much for coming back tonight. And I believe you got a friend with you tonight. And we thank you tonight for coming and having a worship experience with us here at First Apostle. Are oh, we glad to have our guests with us? Thank God. Thank God. You, you may be seated. Would somebody run me my cell phone up here just real quick? Brother Erickson, um, Brother Erickson been, has been doing some teaching on Wednesday night about prodigals coming home and he'd be doing some teaching about um, the names of the prodigals that are in the, um, the prodigal vase that we have and I got this text today as a matter of fact let me tell you up in the Sevierville campus today the Sevierville campus today a, a prodigal that we didn't even know, a prodigal that we didn't even know was told by family members in South Carolina, said, you need to go to that apostolic church there in Sevierville. And that prodigal made her way to that church today. Thank God. And came home. Came home. Baptized in Jesus' name today. Came home. And I thank God for the good reports. Brother Fallon, Sister Fallon from our Cleveland First Apostolic Church. Would everybody, Brother and Sister Fallon, Brother, everybody from the Cleveland work, would you all stand right now? Everybody from the Cleveland Church. Aren't you glad to have First Apostolic Church of Cleveland? Man, they're in a building now having church. And we love God and uh, Brother, Brother Perry. You'd be, you'd be delighted to know that that money that you gave, that y'all gave to carpet that new church, they're shouting on that carpet. They're praising God on that carpet. We're so glad to have the Cleveland church. And Sister Grider sent our family feed a text today that said, Pastor and family, I had to share something ama some amazing news that happened in my family this weekend. My dad's little sister, my aunt, called him up the other day and told him she had been reading over a Bible study that he, gave, that he had gave her actually a few years ago and asked him to baptize her. And my dad baptized her yesterday. Her name, Pastor, her name is in the prodigal jar at the church. This is amazing. She's been around it with the family that has spiritually been away for years. Thank you for the prayers over the jar, even though it did, we, you didn't know her name, God knew her name. And aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful for that tonight? 
Oh, I'm so very, I'm so very thankful for all the good things that are happening and everybody making it back after COVID. The folks have slowly uh, begun to come back in and we just so appreciate. Didn't you enjoy our choir getting back at it tonight? Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. All this birthday celebration, I'm reminded of that hitchhiker who a truck came by and the truck driver said, Buddy, said the only place you can ride is in the back. But he said, I got to tell you, I don't have no shocks on this old truck and it's a rough ride. I got a few down, miles down the road and hitchhiker hit on the window. He said, you're going to have to stop. I, I, you're going to have to stop this. I can't take no more. And I almost think about my birthday celebration. Y'all going to have to stop this. I can't take no more of this. All right. I can't take no more of this. But God is good. And I appreciate God giving me 60 years. And I hope that God gives me many more years of good health. I hold my offering up. I have a regular prayer. I pray. When I hold my offering up, I, I tell God I thank Him for good health. And I thank Him for giving me the ability to earn an income for my family, to feed my family. And I thank Him for the ability to support the greatest thing on the earth today, and that's the church of the living God. And if you ever stand beside me when I'm giving, it's, it's, I have it down word for word, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart. How many is glad just for good health tonight? Come on, how many just glad for good health? Now, I know we've all had the flu every now and then, but how many, and, 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 a, and a headache, but how many's glad tonight you've had good health? Oh, God, I just thank, why don't we just stand and thank Him for good health right now? Father, I thank You for good health tonight. God, I thank You. You've given me the ability to have a trade. You've given me the ability, God, to earn an income for my family. God, I thank You tonight. Come on, let's just thank Him for a few moments. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my good health, God. Thank you, God, for my peace of mind. Thank you that I know my name, Lord. Thank you that I know what day it is. I know what time it is, God. Thank you that I know how to live for you and how to serve you, Lord. Thank you. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah. 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 If you have your Bibles, open them tonight to uh, Leviticus chapter 16, verse number 14. Leviticus chapter 16. Leviticus chapter 16. Verse number 14. Some have called this a boring book. I've heard, I've heard people get up and say, you know, Leviticus said it's not a lot of exciting things happen in Leviticus. But I, number one, I, I don't think there's one book of 66 books that are boring. Matter of fact, I think Leviticus is a great book because Leviticus tells us how to worship God. And um, I thank him. Leviticus chapter 16, <clears throat> verse number 14. Just a few moments tonight. I'm thankful for Brother Sharp. I'm thankful for your friend, Dean. Dean, uh, a, a, a co-worker with you that Brother Sharp's been witnessing to and telling him about the goodness of the Lord. A man came this morning, sat in his pew, shook under the power of God, some of you didn't see this, but while the preaching was going on, Dean sat there and shook under the power of God. Came to the altar and felt the good presence of the Lord. And uh, by faith, you're going to teach him a Bible study. And by faith, he's going to be baptized in Jesus' name. And by faith, Dean's going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. By faith, things are going to happen. Amen. Just a few moments tonight. Leviticus 16, verse number 14. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock. We've been talking about the blood today. He shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger 
upon the mercy seat eastward. Eastward. Everybody say that word with me. Eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. For a few moments tonight, I want to interest you in God's love and God's mercy. I want to preach on this subject, the east side of mercy. The east side of mercy. Father, I love you tonight. You are a merciful God. You've not given up on any of us. God, if we feel that we're not loved tonight, it's because we don't truly understand who you are. If we feel that you've given up on us tonight, it's because we just don't know truly the fullness of who you are. Father, tonight from the pulpit to the back door to those that are watching by way of the web, may the Holy Ghost for the next few moments take my words anoint them, push back darkness, open up the mind of faith so that people can be baptized tonight. People can be moved upon with your spirit. Lord, anoint us and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The east side of mercy. It's interesting when I read this passage of Scripture that it was nothing uncommon for the priest to dip his finger in the blood of the sacrifices. There's nothing uncommon for that. The Bible has many examples of the priest dipping his finger in the blood of And even the number seven appears. Seven being the number of completion. We know in Leviticus 4 and 6, and the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. Leviticus 4 and 17, and the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil. Leviticus 8 and 11, and he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar and all of his vessels, both with the labor and his foot to sanctify it. So the the sprinkling of the blood and even the seven times is nothing unusual But yet in our text tonight of of Leviticus 16 and verse 14, one word causes that verse to differ from all other verses in that God gives a specific direction. He says, I want you to sprinkle the blood eastward on the mercy seat. So it speaks of a, it speaks of a, of a direction, of of, of a direction. Everybody say a direction. There was a direction. We find as we study in the Bible that the word east has many common things. We understand that both the tabernacle of the Old Testament And the temple in the New Testament all faced toward the east. They faced toward the east. We understand an interesting fact, Sister Carpenter, that the Bible says in Matthew chapter 2 and verse number 2, the wise men came saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. We understand that in Genesis chapter 4 and verse number 16, after Cain 
had murdered his brother Abel, that the Bible says that Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Now, I want you to understand something. It's not that he left a location as much as he went into a direction. He went out from the presence of the Lord, from the influence of the Lord, and dwelt in the land of Nod. And guess where Nod is located? On the east of Eden. East becomes an interesting direction. We understand that when Lot and Abraham stood and discussed that they could no longer dwell together and Abraham gave his nephew Lot the opportunity to choose which direction he would go. The Bible says in Genesis 13 and 11, then Lot chose him all the plains of Jordan and Lot journeyed east. He journeyed east. We also understand tonight that when the children of Israel wanted to mimic the world and wanted to be like the the, the heathen nations around, we know that the Bible said they went into captivity and guess where their land of captivity would lay? The land of captivity would lay toward the east. Now, as I have looked at this word in my text 16 and 14, that he had specific directions that I want you to sprinkle the blood eastward on the altar. I want you to find the eastward part of the altar. And I want you to sprinkle the blood. I dug up a little research about what east means in the Bible. It says, I I, I read one commentary or one gentleman that gave a blog on this. He said, see, it's not that good places were in the west and bad places were in the east. He says, it's all about the direction. The direction travel. Let me pause here for a moment. Isn't that where, really where we first get hung up in our walk with God? Is that we're not necessarily in a bad place, but our direction. It's the direction. It's not necessarily that what you're doing is a sin. It's just the direction. I don't know about you this evening. I don't know about you this morning, this evening. See, I told you I had good mind. Now you're debating whether I do or not. I was going to say this about getting old. You young folks, every time we older folks stutter over a word, stop thinking we're losing it. Do what would you say? Can I get a witness tonight? When we have to name six kids before we finally get to you, just shut up and answer, all right? (laughs) See, what us older folks have learned, we've learned how to think before we talk. I love (laughs) y'all. This evening. It's not necessarily that West was a bad place. East is a bad place. It's all about direction travel. But the direction traveled for worldly fame. You face east to see the past and the present. The realms of your memory and experience look east at what's gone before. But you also see God coming from the east. You see God coming from the east. How many tonight can look east and have a good memory of the blessings of Almighty God? Sister Mona, so good to see you back at church tonight. Amen. Thank God. I'm happy to see some of our folks coming back after this terrible ordeal with COVID. I'm thankful. We look east. 
I've got good memories of what God has done. God's been faithful. God has provided. But I only look east in a direction of what God has done. Oh, praise God. But I, I can also look east and I can see God coming toward me. You look east to what's gone before to see God coming. But when you see him coming, he's traveling towards you. And if you want to stick with him, you've got to move yourself and travel west. You got to go west. He's coming from the east and you got to go west. Because if you turn and go east, you're sure to miss him. But if you keep going in the direction that you're going, go west, church. Go west, church. When you come to the east side of the altar where the blood's at, don't turn around. Pursue tonight. It's all about movement. It's all about our future. Our future is in the west. Greater things, as they have said tonight, are in the west. Can I say tonight that your best years are not behind you? In Jesus' name, your best years are not behind you. Because I see a God who has forgiven me. And I see a God who holds no records. I see a God that says I can make all things new. I see a God that says my mercies are fresh and new upon you every 24 hours a day. God has fresh mercy. Come on, could we praise him right now? I'm talking about the east side of the altar where God blesses. The blessings of God. But symbolically tonight, Symbolically tonight, we must be in the direction of going west. Symbolically tonight, our leanings, our leanings must be toward God and not away from God. Tonight, our direction must be ever so inching closer to a greater relationship we've had with God. Oh, sweet Jesus. I don't want to look back on the east side of the altar of memory and see a man that used to do more for God. I don't want to look on the east side of the altar and see a woman or a man that used to be more on fire for God. I don't want to look back on the east side of the altar to the first apostolic church and be able to relive the days that we used to shout out of the choir law. And the women used to shout their hair down. And we used to have shoes and bobby pins in the altars. I'm thankful tonight that those are not days that we see in our past, but those are days that we experience in our future. Is Knox, is Knox Johnson, uh, he, I, I know he's here, but uh, Knox, you, you think you've talked Knox into coming up here with Pastor for a moment? You think you talked, Knox, would you come up here for a moment? Would you just come running up here? You come running up here. And Brother Brandon, help me. Dad, come on up here. Help me tell the story. Help me tell the story, Dad. But old Knox, the other night, God got to dealing with Knox. And Knox couldn't go to sleep. Am I right, Brandon? Knox couldn't go to sleep. And uh, his mom and daddy wanted him to go to bed. You need to go to sleep, right? You need to get in bed. But he kept coming. Uh, go, you go ahead and tell. You, you, you were the witness to it. Uh, well, he was... Uh, there you go. We were uh, telling him to go to bed, and he's usually pretty good at listening and going to bed, but he kept getting up, and he was acting like he was scared. He was crying, and... You know, I was trying to be a nice dad at first and just, yeah. it's all right, but I go back to sleep. But, you know, after a while, it's like, I'm going to kill you. Go back to bed, you know. And, uh, but he keeps coming in, coming in. And finally, I said, I said, Knox, you just need to go in there. You need to pray. You need to do what you need to do. We're right here. There's nothing to be scared of. So I sat on the couch for a little while, and he went in his room. He was in there for probably 20, 30 minutes. Finally, I went to bed um, thinking he's, he's finally gone to sleep. Well, 
I'm laying there and all of a sudden he comes busting in my room and he's just got tears flowing down his face. And immediately I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna kill him, this is it. Yeah. And uh, he says, dad, 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 no, no, no. He said, these, are, these aren't sad tears, these, these are tears of joy. <laughs> And uh, I kind of laughed. It kind of caught me off guard. I said, okay, well, what do you mean, bud? And he said, Dad, I went to my room, and he said, I, I started praying. He said, I, I was reading my Bible. I was reading Acts. And he said, and I was reading past Acts 2.38. And he said, I don't know what it was, but I was just so scared. He said, but all of a sudden, God talked to me, Dad. He said, he spoke to my heart. And he told me, he said, everything's going to be okay. He said, I'm coming soon. And he said, Dad, he told me he's going to use me to do things that I can't even understand right now. Thank you, Knox. Can I tell you something? When a lot of churches don't believe in prophesying anymore, I'm glad to be looking at the altar and see it's still happening with us. What do you think about a little boy that said, Dad, God's going to use me. God's going to touch me. I want to go west, don't you, church? I want to go west. I want to go with God. You may be seated. Some churches have taken the blessings of God and have become too dignified to worship God. They have become too educated. They have, quote, they have arrived. But can I tell you, we came out of a world that could not help us. Why in the name of God conform to a world? I say let the church be the church. I say somebody find some blood and put it on the east side of the altar and let's look back at what God has done, but let's also look at the one that's coming toward us. God's not through with you. God's not through with the Johnson family. God's not through with the First Apostolic Church. God's not through with the Lee family. Ben, you know, Papa and Mama were great workers for God, but God is not through with the Lee family. I see him coming to do greater things. What's your direction? What's your direction? Well, I can tell you, how we fit into the book of Acts. Acts chapter 20 and verse number seven. Let's just see how apostolic we are. Acts chapter 20 and verse number seven. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech unto midnight. Well, we probably still staying apostolic. Long sermons are not all that bad. Well, you can't keep people long anymore. Their attention span. Whose attention span? See, if we're trying to appease people that are TV obsessed, Then you gotta you, you, you gotta work on that crowd. You gotta shave it down. You gotta you, you gotta have you a Burger King church. Hold the doctrine, hold the holiness, hold the revival, special service will not upset us. Have it your way. You know, that's hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders won't upset us, right? Well, some churches have turned into Burger King church. Hold the doctrine, hold the holiness. No more services because we don't want to upset the customer. But when you got a group of people that are not talking about what their grandparents did, but they're believing God on the east side of the altar for what God's going to do. Maybe before the Lord comes back, we might go back to some of those midnight services where we just tarried in the presence of God and we got a hold of the horns of the altar. Can I preach a few more moments tonight? I love you, Isaiah. I just met you tonight, dude, but I love you already, man. (laughs) 
And there were many lights. Let's see if we're apostolic. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. Yeah, we look apostolic. <laughs> and there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep. Lord, I love reading that. Because I ain't ever feeling bad anymore when somebody goes to sleep in church. Mighty God, if they went to sleep in the Apostle Paul, who do I think I am that they'll stay awake from me? <laughs> Being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, man, we're apostolic. He was long preaching. He sunk down with sleep and fell from the third law and was taken up dead. You know what Eutychus' problem was? He wanted to be in the church, but he wanted the most comfortable seat in the church. He wanted to feel the air from the outside blow through. So he found him a window ledge. Probably maybe his mama, maybe his grandmama said, Now, Eudy, you better watch sitting on the ledge. That's dangerous to be sitting on the ledge. Can I tell you tonight, there's dangerous seats in this house. Don't ever try to get comfortable in church. Don't ever gauge the service by your fleshly comfort. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if we're trying to appease our flesh, we're in a most dangerous place. I want to feel the winds from outside. As a matter of fact, I'd like to get here to the window, maybe the ball game. Maybe the ball game's down the road. Maybe I can hear the score on the ball game. Maybe I can look out at the window. You know, they didn't have cell phones back then. Maybe they looked out at the window and waved at people when they went by. Because after all, I'm in the church, but I'm also wanting to know what's going on outside. But that cool wind on one side and that hot air on the other side dulled his senses he wasn't sitting right up front, Paul's loud preaching to keep him awake. He found him a good, quiet place in the church. He found him a good place. What's wrong with sitting in the window? Ain't nothing wrong with it, but it's not a good direction to be going. And the Bible, I, I, believe, I, I believe I can prove this tonight. His leaning was not toward the church. His leaning was toward the world because when he fell, if he had been leaning the right direction, he'd have fell in the church. But because he's leaning the wrong direction, he falls three stories and hits on the pavement and they think that he's dead. Brothers and sisters, tonight, we don't need to be leaning out toward the world because if we go to sleep, I don't want to wake up in the world. I don't want to wake up in a hell hole. I don't want to wake up in a divorce court. I don't want to wake up in a drug rehab. I don't want to wake up losing my family. I want to wake up in the church. I want to wake up in the church. Come on, if you want to wake up in the church, just give him praise right now. Matter of fact, why don't you shout it out? I want to wake up in the church. I want to wake up in the church. I want the prayer room to wake me up. I want somebody shouting to wake me up. I want somebody witnessing. I want, a, I want the east side of the altar. I want to raise a grandson that comes in the room and says, Dad, God's going to use me. But you don't see that if you don't put blood on the east side of the altar. As a matter of fact, it's not time to retire. It's time to refire. It's not time to think we've reached our utopia. A miracle, miracle was just the beginning. The Bible tells us about a young man in 1 Kings chapter 13, verse number 7. 
He was a young man that God spoke to, much like Knox. And God told him to go down and prophesy against false worship. This young boy went down and he prophesied. That was standing around an altar, a false altar, holding flaming coals. And that young Knox, that young boy, prophesied against that altar. And he prophesied that a sign that it would come to pass was that the altar would be split and the coals would drop out. About that time, the old wicked king with a straight arm, Brother Nolan, that old wicked king stretched his hand out and his arm to stop him. Arrest that man, arrest that man. Not only did God let the altar split open, but God smote that man's arm and that man lost the ability to control his arm. His arm was either stiff or limp. He had no ability to pull it back. And so he said to the young man, would you pray for me that my arm be restored? And the young boy prayed for him and his arm was restored again. And the king put his arms around him and he said, young man, I want you to come home with me. I'm going to feed you some bread and give you some water. I'm going to make you very wealthy, young man. And that young boy stepped up back and he said, sir, let me tell you something. I will not go home with you. I will not take a sup of water in this place. I will not bite one morsel of bread. I will not take, I will not take a dime from you. Because God told me that I was to enter this town in one road. And I wasn't even to go back the direction that I came into town. He told me that I was to drink no water, to eat no bread. I can't even go back on the road that I came in on. I got to go back on a different road. That young man was told about the east side of the altar. He was told that you never retract your steps. Because sometimes when we go back, there is the spirit of familiarity that comes in. And as we get too familiar, as we get too familiar, we have a tendency to dismiss things from our mind. They tell me that most people traveling that have wrecks because they fall asleep, fall asleep within a few miles of their home. And the only thing they have to say about it is they believe that they've conquered the trip and their mind gets at ease and they fall asleep and kill themselves or greatly harm themselves just a few miles away from home. Can I tell you that with everything that we're seeing, the violence in our streets, the COVID-19, the global coming together, church, we're just a few miles from home. Let's not fall asleep. It's not an hour to fall asleep. It's not an hour to have the east side of the altar that you don't see. It's not an hour to fall asleep. It's not an hour to get uninvolved. It's not an hour to let up. It's not an hour to think you can't fall. It's an hour to shake yourself. It's an hour to shake yourself. It's an hour to say, God, I want to be saved. God, I want to be refilled with the Holy Ghost. God, I don't want to lose my love for truth. I don't want to lose my love for holiness. I don't want to lose my love for the dependency. I, I just don't believe it. You miss one Wednesday night, you're going to be lost. No. But I will tell you this, if you can look back on the east side of the altar when you used to not miss a Wednesday night. Well, Brother So-and-So's church, they just have one service and Brother So-and-So's church, that's fine, that's fine. Go attend Brother So-and-So's church. But I, I, no, I didn't really mean that. <laughs> Maybe I am losing it. I wouldn't want you to. Because we don't need to have less in this last day. 
We need to have more. We don't, we don't need to have less. We need to have more. Let's not accept our children coming up and having less church than what they were brought up on. Don't let your, don't let your, oh, here we go now. Don't let your daughters marry boys that are not faithful to church. Don't let your boys marry girls that are not faithful to church. If they're not faithful when they're single, they're not going to be faithful when they're married. Come on, I'm talking about the east side of the altar. Oh, they some not liking this tonight. I understand that. God help them. God help them tonight. God help them tonight, Lord. I know they think I'm old fashioned. I know they think I'm old fogey. But God, we got to be saved. I've got to see the east side of the altar. I love you. I love you. But I want you to love God. I can't go home and eat with you. It was charged to me by the word of the Lord. Eat no bread, no drink, no water in this place. He obeyed God. He went out of town the opposite direction. But that day in the temple, there were some young men there whose daddy was a false prophet. And the boys go home. And they said, Daddy, we saw a most unusual sight at the, at, at, at the temple today. What was it, son? A young man walked in and started prophesying that the altar would be, would be rent and the ashes would be poured out. And the young boy began to prophesy and the young boy began to say that it would happen. And Dad, just like that young boy said it, the altar cracked open and the ashes rolled off, fell out. And about that time, Daddy, the king stretched his hand out to arrest the boy. But the king's arm went limp. And the king begged the young man to pray for him. And he did, and his arm was restored again. And the old false prophet said, which way did he go? Which way did he go? Verse 11 said, now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And the sons came and told him all the works of the man of God, how, what he had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king. Them they told also to their father. They told to their father. Their father said unto them, What way went he? Verse 12, 1 Kings 13. For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came to, from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereupon. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. Now let's talk about that for a moment. You see, not that you have a leaning. You may not have a leaning tonight. You just may be inactive. You're just inactive. You're on your way to fulfilling God's law, word. But you just stop and you get inactive. You see, the word of the Lord said, eat no bread, drink no water. Don't even go out the same road that you go, that you came in on. But isn't it amazing? The word of the Lord never said something about me just sitting down. You know, he really should have thought about it. The old shade tree over there. What did that shade tree appeal to? His flesh. I'm tired. I'm tired. Some would say, I'm just tired of fighting, Brother Carpenter. Didn't you hear my song tonight? So stand up and fight again. Jesus knows you've got what it takes to make it. Could I tell a housewife tonight? who has maybe uttered these very words this week, I'm tired. Can I tell you? To stand up and fight again. It's not a time to sit down. Oh, shade tree of the world beckoned him. I really don't see anything wrong with just getting inactive. Just let me get inactive. Just let me come and soak this in. He found him an oak tree. 
The man of God found him sitting under the oak tree. And the man of God said in verse 14, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. Same thing the world told him. Now the old false prophet tells him. Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, neither will I go with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee at this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And here's where you got to think. What the world could not do to him, a false prophet could. The world, Satan is probably never going to tempt some of you to go buy illegal drugs. Satan is probably not going to tempt some of you to go buy you some liquor on your way home tonight. You go to Kroger shopping or wherever and you pass by where they're selling the bottles, you don't have one temptation to stop. But just because the world doesn't have any kind of pull on you, doesn't mean that spirits can't try to get you. That's why the Bible said to try the spirits. Try the spirits. Can I get a witness tonight? That's why we need to try the spirits. When something feels good, put it up. Put it on trial. Ask yourself, if I follow the lead of this spirit, will it draw me closer to God? Will it draw me closer to his love? Will I be a brighter witness? Will I be a brighter testimony? Will I, be, will I mean more for the kingdom of God? Come on, church. What the world can't do for us, there's false spirits in the church that are trying to lull us asleep. I'm going to tell you, had the boy been thinking, he would have snooped him out with this first thing. Verse 18 said, I am a prophet also as thou art. You could have stopped right there and said, well, if you are a prophet just like I am, then why did God have to send me? If you're just like me, then why did God need me? He said, I'm a prophet just like you are. An angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord saying, bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Can I tell you, if there's ever been a day that you need to own a Bible, it's today. If there's ever been a day you ought to read the Bible, start out, let me start from the top. If there's ever been a day you ever own a Bible, if there's ever a day you ought to read your Bible, if there's ever a day you ought to listen to the preacher when he preaches, if there's ever a day you need midweek Bible study, you know why? There's a lying spirit in this world that's going to tell you you don't have to do all that. We're all going to go be with the man upstairs. God's going to call us out. But I'm going to tell you, sad day on judgment for some because he lied unto them. He lied to that boy. Oh, I don't want somebody to lie to me. Well, how do I know that they're lying? Get the book of truth up. Hold up the book of truth. And the book of truth will reveal the lie. Does somebody want to be saved in this house tonight? Do we have a few hundred apostolic people on a Sunday night that say, I want to make it all the way home? I want to make it all the way home. Then you better get a Bible. You better read a Bible. You better listen to a preacher. You better, you better inundate yourself with the Word. Because he lied. Damn. You may be seated. Musicians, would you come? Somebody say it again with me. He lied unto him. Say it again. He lied. Can I tell you something? If you're sprinkling the blood on the east side of the altar, if you're sprinkling the blood 
on the east side of the mercy seat. You just passed the table of shoe bread, which is the word. East. If the wise men came from the east, which direction were they going? West. That's right. If I was coming to worship God in the temple, and the temple was facing the east, which way am I coming? West. Because if I'm going east, I've got God behind me. No wonder God doesn't catch up with some of us. Is because we're going away from God. But when I look at the east side of the altar, I see God coming toward me. And as he traveled from the labor to the candlesticks, he's going west. As he's traveling to the veil, the young boy went back, but he lied to him. The young boy sat down to a meal at the old false prophet's house. And while he was eating the meal, I don't have all the explanation for you. I just have the book. While that young man was sitting there eating the bread, drinking the water, the Spirit of God began to shake that old false prophet. And that old false prophet said, Thus saith the Lord, because you have not listened to the word of God, you shall not make it home. You shall be slain by a lion on your way home. The young man jumped up and frantic. I can see the young boy jump, jump up, frantically jump up. He ran outside and saddled the ass that he was riding. And off down the road, he began to ride. I'm going to make it back. I'm going to make it back. But as he rounded the corner, a lion was perched. The Bible said the lion leaped and took the young man off the beast and only made a tear mark enough to kill him. Only made a tear mark. Normally, lions just grind up their prey. Drag them off somewhere. Mangle them. But that lion just leaped upon him and possibly just punctured his neck enough for him to bleed and die. But the interesting thing is that the old false prophet went and got him. When the old false prophet rounded the corner, he saw a most unusual sight. Number one, he didn't see the mangled body of a young man. He saw a young man that looked like he all just set up. But just a few puncture marks in his neck. But then he saw another unusual sight. The donkey stood over here and the lion stood beside the donkey. That doesn't happen. But God is trying to tell them something. When we go against the Word of God, we go against the very hand that's trying to feed us. He says, I can control the... I can control the viciousness of this lion. I can control the fear of this donkey. But I can't control humans. The ox knows where its crib is. And the donkey knows its master. But my people, they consider me not. Can I preach to you tonight? And can I tell you that every last one of us before we leave tonight need to have a vision 
of the east side of the altar and see what God has done for us. I can't tell you the number of marriages that I've tried to salvage that start out something like this. When we were in church real good, we were the happiest we ever had been. But you know, he got that job that kept him out. And you know, we got that new baby and we just really couldn't get up on Sunday morning and get everybody ready. He started coming just every now and then, hit and miss. Folks, I really do know what I'm talking about tonight. Young people, that their life is tangled up. I was the happiest when I was in school. I was the happiest when I was in the choir. You know, tonight, the sad thing is, that old prophet got that boy up, took him back to his town, and said, bury him in my grave. I don't know about you, but I got a grave I want to be buried in. And it's a grave that will have a resurrection. I don't want to be buried in the wrong cave. I don't want to be buried in the wrong tomb. I want to be buried in my grave that will hear these words. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? But I must come to the altar tonight and look on the east side to a God that has done exceedingly, abundantly, and a God tonight that's coming toward me, saying, let me love you. Would you stand with me tonight? Could I ask my prayer warriors all over this building, from left to right to front to back, can we begin to pray right now? Is there anyone here that wants to see the east side of the altar tonight? Come right now. Is there anyone here tonight? Your heart is beating. Your throat feels like it's about to close up. You're under conviction. You're under conviction tonight. Yes, you are. You're under conviction tonight. You're under conviction tonight. Some have already come. That's good. Come on tonight. You're under conviction right now. Why don't you make your way to this altar right now? Will you make your way to this altar right now? Come on, let's all pray right now. You're here tonight. Somebody invited you. You weren't really prepared for what you've been feeling. You, you've been feeling the east side of mercy right now. You, you've been feeling a God that said, I, you know, I kept you from a car wreck some time ago. And, you know, I spared your life some time ago. And, and, and here I'm coming towards you tonight. Don't run from me tonight, though. Come walking come walk to the east side of the altar right now. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Go ahead, that's right, that's right. Go ahead right now, go ahead. Go ahead, we got, let's pray right here, right here. We got some folks praying right here. Go ahead, Sister Sharp, go ahead. I ask you to move up as close as you can up around the altar. Come on, move up as close as you can up around the altar right now. The east side. Come on, ask God. Let me see the east side right now. Let me see the east side of the altar right now. Let me see the east side. Mighty God, mighty God. Come on. Come on, come on. Let's all gather up around this altar. Oh God, the east side of the old. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. What I want to say, holiness, holiness is what I. Thank you. 
our church in prayer right now. Singers, just in a moment, we, we can sing, but I want to rededicate our lives tonight. I want you to raise your hands right now. I want to lead us in prayer. God, I rededicate my life to you. God, I reconsecrate my life to you, God. God, you filled me with the Holy Ghost many years ago. God, I gave my life to you many years ago. God, I have broken promises that I made you. God, I've allowed myself to listen to the lying spirit of the false prophet. I have comforted myself that I'm not as bad as others. I have comforted myself, but God, no more comforting. God, I rededicate my life to you tonight. I rededicate my life to pursue a daily prayer life. I rededicate my life to pursue a daily prayer life. I rededicate myself to pursue a daily reading of the Bible. I rededicate my life to reading the Bible. Come on, church. Come on, church. If you pray it with me, pray it out loud. Oh, God, I rededicate my life, God. I rededicate my life, Lord. I rededicate my life to daily prayer. I rededicate my life to daily Bible study. I rededicate my life to have total victory. I rededicate my life to have total victory. God, no habits should be in my life. No habits, God, should be in my life that's taking my health from me. I rededicate myself to being absolutely set free. I rededicate myself tonight to finding my place in your house. I rededicate myself to finding my calling. I rededicate myself to find my place. I rededicate myself tonight, God, to work for you. God, I will no longer see any job in your house as substandard. God, I will no longer see any job done in your house as substandard. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. God, I rededicate my life to you right now. God, I rededicate my life to you right now. Are you praying in church? Come on, all over this building, I rededicate my life to you. I rededicate my life to you. God, if I've allowed myself to get out of the habit of going to church, on this Sunday evening, God, I tell you that I will begin to realign my priorities. I'll never see another Wednesday night Bible study as something common or something I can live with or live without. God, I rededicate myself back to midweek Bible study. I rededicate myself, oh God, back to Sunday morning and Sunday night. I rededicate my life back to the time that I would be here every time the doors were open. Come on, let's pray. I don't think this is going to be very effective if the church don't pray. I, I don't think this burden will last you till you get home tonight if you don't shake up your soul and pray right now. Hallelujah. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. I rededicate my You see that it, it, it won't make it won't it won't move you tonight if you don't pray it right now. It won't move you if you don't pray it right now. God, I rededicate my life. Oh 
mighty God. Mighty God. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the features of First Apostolic Church. Even evangelists that come through here and preach. Evangelists, people that come through here and preach, will tell you Raymond Woodward, Jimmy Tony, Michael Mop, and evangelists will come through and they'll say, one of the things about the Miracle Church, they can be preached to. They can be preached to. Woe be to a people that can't be preached to. I've already decided. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, this sermon tonight's going to reap a harvest. There's going to be people here this coming Wednesday night. And you say, Brother Carver, you're preaching to me tonight. And I know you love me. And I'm going to tell you, it's not a time issue. It's not a time. We all have the same amount of time, 24 hours. It's a priority issue. But Brother Claiborne, I, I already witnessed if the Lord tarries and I go by way of the grave, I've already witnessed what I would like to see done at my funeral. Joe David Sizemore, one of the greatest men of God to ever preach. Have you ever heard Brother Joe David Sizemore? There was none, there was none like him. We was at his funeral. And they asked all the ministers as they took Brother Sizemore's body out. All of us ministers formed a line on both sides. And Sister Jackie Sizemore led her husband out. And behind her was her husband in that coffin. And I'll never forget that woman coming down that aisle. And she was saying, thank you God for a husband that taught me the truth. Thank you, God, for a husband that lived a life. Thank you, God, for a husband that walked upright. Now, no doubt, Joe David Sizemore had taken his wife on Hawaii vacations. David, Joe David Sizemore had bought his wife all kinds of expensive cars and coats and clothes. But when it comes to the end of life, you forget about all those things. And you hone in what truly matters. Can I tell you what? Look, I got to work to put better clothes on my kids. Can I tell you? Being here on Wednesday night is what they're going to remember about you when you lay before them. They're not going to stand there. I've stood there and listened to a lot of kids say, they didn't say my daddy bought me night tennis shoes. My daddy bought me my daddy bought me a car. They stand there and say my daddy took me to the house of God. My daddy worshiped God. My daddy was a worshiper. A vision tonight of the east side of the altar. God bless you tonight. You're dismissed in Jesus name.